Here we are. Daniel Naroditsky alias Rebecca Harris. Are you ready for some bullet questions? Always. Bullet <laughs> anything. I'm always ready. <laughs> Good. Here we go. Okay. First question. Who is your favorite opponent to play against? So I can answer this question in two ways, and I'll choose the way I want to answer it. I can tell you statistically which opponent, which strong opponent I have the best score with. But the way I prefer to answer it is to tell you which opponent I have the most fun with. And yeah. as cliche of an answer as this is, I have to point to Magnus. So what usually happens, and Magnus and I, of course, play these long matches on Lee Chess from time to time. Um, so what will happen is I'll, I'll see that he's online. I will make haste to, to drop whatever I'm doing. Um, and I'll send him a challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, generally, when Magnus accepts, it takes him about 45 minutes to an hour until I, you know, the, the sound when somebody accepts your challenge on Lee Chess. <laughs> yes. So I'll start doing whatever I'm doing. You know, Intriguing. one time I was making a steak. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll be in the bathroom when he accepts. Whatever it is that I'm currently doing, I will drop it, run to my computer, <laughs> and make a move because the worst thing is to keep Magnus waiting, even though he's actually super nice. But when I play Magnus, it is to me a, a it, it is an experience of a lifetime every single time. Uh -huh. It is honestly, it's euphoria. Even if yeah. I'm playing badly, I'm feeling totally euphoric uh, because just the thought that I'm playing my favorite format against my favorite player and the greatest player of all time uh, carries me forward. And I think it's brought out some of my best bullet chess, even though I have a pretty serious minus score against him if we take all of our thousands of games gotcha nice excellent have you ever bet money in any way shape or form regarding bullet never i've actually never bet on anything ever i, I think i'm too um too risk averse off the board i'm very risk risk intensive on the board but off the board i i don't really do any kind of betting which video game have you played the most so I'll preface this by saying that I, I haven't played video games since I was maybe eight or nine. Um, there have been really only two games, computer video games that I have been into. When I was little, I used to play Super Smash Brothers, which is a pretty famous Nintendo game with my brother. We had an old uh, Nintendo 98. And uh, a couple of years later, I got really, really into this computer game called Age of Empires. It still exists. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a particular release of that game that I was completely obsessed with. Uh, but at some point, you know, chess kind of took over. And uh, I enjoy some uh, some computer games, but never really got into video games. Gotcha. Rate your strength between 1 to 10, 10 being the highest for bullet, of course. My bullet strength. Yeah, so that would be um, speed. Speed, uh, purely speed. I'm going to, I usually don't rank myself highly in anything, but... I'm going to try to be objective here. Yeah, don't be shy. Uh, I'm going to go with an eight. Okay, uh, that's far too shy. Tactics. <laughs> All right, tactics. Since that is my strength, uh, especially in bullet, I'm going to go with nine. Unbelievable. Chess knowledge. So I definitely lack in certain areas. Like openings might be my biggest weakness in classical chess. It has also hurt me at times in Bullet when I play, and we'll, I'm sure, get into this, but there are certain players who tend to play their actual repertoire in Bullet games. I'm going to go with a seven and a half. <laughs> and uh, Bullet expertise, for example, like you know exactly how to flag an opponent if necessary. All right. right, I'll, I'll, I have to be highly immodest here. This is unprecedented for me to say this. I'm going to give myself a 10. There, oh my God, finally. Finally, you got so, it out of me. <laughs> you, you, you heard one of the greatest bullet chess players in the world giving himself a 7 and 8, a 9 and a 10. <laughs> in general, are you a healthy eater or what do you consider yourself being a healthy eater? Um, I think in terms of the actual food I eat, I'm healthy. I, I don't drink soda. I... Um, I limit my, my sugar intake because that causes me to pass out. So that thing my you problem, just picked up that was pure water in the Coca-Cola can. Is, I, this is iced tea, uh, iced unsweetened. Tea. Here we yeah, go. yeah, this is just a, I just like this can because it contains a lot of liquid. <laughs> so my two biggest go-to drinks are water, sparkling. I love sparkling water, iced tea, unsweetened. Most of the time, sometimes I, I uh, succumb to the temptation and coffee. 
-hmm. The problem is that I eat uh, infrequently. I often eat one time a day, uh, one big meal a day. And I know that's terrible, but because of my lifestyle, my eating times are all over the place. Sometimes it'll be midnight. Sometimes it'll be 6 p.m. And that's uh, oh. that's my biggest issue. Don't feed them after midnight. So how many hours <laughs> do you normally sleep? Ooh, that's a, that's a touchy <laughs> subject. Um, uh -oh. Not enough. I think on average, I'd have to probably say six, six and a half. Oh, okay. um, sometimes I feel exhausted and all. I can sleep for 12, 13 hours easy if you give me the chance. But there are way too many nights where I have to limit myself to four or five. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, did you immediately get hooked on Bullet when you played it the very first time, or did it take a while to get the hang of it? That's a good question. Um, if my memory is straight, it, it, it did take a while. I mean, mm -hmm. it was not love at first sight. Now, the complicating factor here is that uh, my dad would limit, uh, and <laughs> I pr appreciated this in retrospect, not at the moment, of course, but he would limit my, my bullet games. My coach would watch my uh, ICC. That's where I played at first. My game history to make sure I wasn't playing. Uh, and I think the limit was 10 bullet games a week. A week, not a day. Oh, good. Um, 10 bullet games a day right now would be unthinkable because, you know, that, that's nothing. That's, that's five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for, for a couple of years, I was, you know, limiting my bullet. And I liked it, but I didn't realize how much I liked it. When I got more independent, I would really say when I became a GM, that's when I really started realizing that I've got a chance to, you know, oh. to be one of the best bullet players. Um, and, and I made a lot of big strides uh, in the first one or two years since I was a GM in terms of my bullet skill. And that's really when I realized I'm kind of addicted to this thing. No. For better maybe, or worse. Maybe we're, <laughs> maybe we're coming to that question too. It depends. It's all random here. So do you ever play or have you ever played bullet uh, over a real board? Yes, many, many times. many times. I think a lot of people who are actually newer to chess, they don't realize that it is possible to play bullet over the board. Huh. Um, now, with certain, with with lightweight pieces, it can be hard. Yes, pieces are flying all over. But which if is the, the part of the fun, I guess. Which is part of the fun. And if you're playing somebody that you know or somebody that you're friends with, and everybody in chess is, is you know, gentlemanly in that regard, mm -hmm. uh, if the pieces start flying and both sides have three or four seconds, <laughs> often you just declare a draw. But that situation arises more infrequently than people would realize. Most of the time yeah. I play bullet over the board, the game is decided before one side gets to uh, two seconds and increment really helps a lot. So I often play a time control of one minute, like plus two second increments, something like that, just to avoid the craziness. But yes, I played no 30 second chess, but a lot of bullet. Hmm. Well, here we are. Here we have it. That's what I wanted to say. Have you ever had a feeling you are addicted to bullet? Oh, a hundred percent. And I'm I'm open about it. I've not attended any bullet bulleteers anonymous meetings yet. But um, I remember this one night that uh, really illustrates, I think, that this is almost a classical addiction. So uh, this was I was as uh, at home visiting my, my family in San Francisco. I had a dentist appointment the following morning at 8 a.m. So 10 p.m. rolls around and like a, you know, like a, a conscientious, disciplined person that I am, I'm in bed, I'm going to get some sleep. Then I go on chess.com uh, just before I turn my computer off. I see Jan Nepomniche is logged in. <laughs> Five bullet games, 10 <laughs> bullet games, then I'll go to bed. We played until 30 minutes before my appointment. That's 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., eight straight hours. Um, I was, I, I shouldn't have operated a vehicle on that morning. I was, I was like, I couldn't see straight, obviously. I made the appointment, but if, if I didn't have anything, we would have played all morning as well. Like, there, are, there comes wow. a point when I just, like, the hours pass, and with almost any other activity, I will eventually get tired and put a lid on it. The only exception is bullet. Oh wow, what a story! So probably when you got the uh, were at the dentist, they, they said like, "Hey, you get an injection." No, you said like the don't. Know what you. happened that night? <laughs> Do you are you, uh, <laughs> you yes, have a exactly. problem like? Oh yeah, wow. your, your eyes are not white. Like yeah, no. My uh, yes, I do have a problem. I, I do have an addiction. Yeah. It's bullet. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's actually yeah, a pretty important theme for me too. This is why I'm also mentioning it in the course. So I, I want to emphasize a little bit more on it. Um, 
what measurements are you taking against it if you have the chance to? Uh, what measurements am I taking against? The addiction, uh, when it, when it oh, is Oh, what measures am I, am I adopting? When yeah. it gets out of hand, yeah. So yeah, I think I've done a better job in the last, um, maybe in the last year. Mm -hmm. So ever since I, one thing that helps, helps me is that since I started streaming on Twitch, and I would say that maybe 75% of the time that I play, I play on stream. Um, a lot of people in my community have a hard time following uh, 30 second games or bullet games. Like mm -hmm. the moves come too fast and it's, it, you know, it's an enjoyable experience for some and everybody respects my skill, but for, for others, like they want to be able to follow what's going on. You know, it's like watching a movie with 5X speed, like you want to follow the plot. So that has really helped me hold myself back because I want people to have an enjoyable experience. So yeah. I'll play a lot more Blitz on stream nowadays than Bullet. Occasionally I slip and I'll play these long 30 second matches. Um, and, you know, the other thing I've tried to institute in my life is I, I've really tried to ask myself before I initiate a, a Bullet match, like, I really want to do this. Am I really going to extract the most out of this experience? What I used to do is I used to play Bullet to pass the time. Like mm -hmm. if I had 30 minutes, 45 minutes, let's go on chess.com, play some Bullet, and that would always go to five hours. Now, if I'm on chess.com to play Bullet or if Ali Reza challenges me on Lee Chess, I don't automatically accept. I force myself to take 30 seconds and ask myself, A, do I have time for this? B, Am I in a state of mind where I feel like I can play my best and really enjoy the experience? Mm -hmm. And that has actually made my bullet matches with Magnus and Ali Reza and Andrew Tang like a lot more enjoyable. As with everything, when you do something less, you start appreciating it more. I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but I've done better. Thank you. Fantastic <laughs> advice. Very, very, very nicely. Keep that in mind, please, for whoever shares something similar with this. Do you think, uh, well, there I go again. Well, that, that <laughs> actually is, uh, yeah, almost uh, uh, part of this question. Do you think bullet can be dangerous due to its addictiveness for, yeah, people who are maybe a bit prone to that? Yeah, it can be. I mean, of course, like with any addiction uh, or, or time sink, it can be destructive of one's personal schedule. Um, it, it, people will be laughing at that, but... You know, you're not laughing. And, and those the people who actually love chess, they know how addictive this can bullet and blitz can be. Uh, yeah. But it can definitely be harmful um, for one's chess development. And I would say that there is an inverse relationship, or no, there's a direct relationship between the amount of time that one has played chess and the amount that like playing bullet harms one's chess development. So I remember a story that I've shared before um, where I... Um, I was about 1800 at the time, so I was maybe nine years old. Uh, I had a weekly club game in my chess club in San Francisco, and I was playing a 1500, so a game I should win. I blunder a knight in one move in the opening. And the moment I blundered, like I would often do when I blundered, I already spend the rest of the game trying to come up with excuses to my coach. I said I sacrificed it. You know, I <laughs> made up these lines. Uh, typical stuff. Now, the following day, my coach, who was uh, I am John Donaldson at the time, he calls me into his his office at the MIG. He was also the director of the Mechanics Chess Club. And he says, I have three letters for you. Three letters, what do you mean? And he says, I, and I knew where he was going at this point, C, C. And I had, John isn't really a computer guy, but he was also not born yesterday. So he had gone onto my ICC account and he had seen that I had played 70, 7-0 bullet games the previous night. And uh, obviously, I, I couldn't see the board straight. I was playing quickly. Oh I was playing God. impulsively. And there were some problems there. Because obviously, I had that curfew that my uh -huh. dad and my coach had instituted, which I had violated. Uh, so I feel like when players are early in their chess development, I categorically advise, I mean, when, with my students, I carefully monitor how much they play. I won't physically stop them or forbid them. But I try to impress upon them the, the notion that, like, when you play a lot of bullet, it really does... Uh, you know, s create these neural connections in your mind that makes it harder to play classical chess. So as a GM, I feel like bullet no longer really harms my overall chess development just because I've learned how to sort of keep them separate in my mind. Mm -hmm. But early on in one's chess development, I, I have to admit, no question about it, playing a lot of bullet is, is not helpful. Rate from 1 to 10 how much you like the specific bullet or chess time, 10 being the highest. 
Hyper or Ultra Bullet? Okay, so Ultra is 15 second, right? I, th and I think is 30 so, second. yeah. Yeah, I have yeah. played a good amount. Uh, shamefully, I've played more Ultra Bullet than I care to admit. Hyper Bullet <laughs> is probably my favorite. Time control, I have to go with the 10. Really? I'm better at Ultra Bullet than I realized. Oh, wow. um, 15 second chess. I'm, I think I'm like number two on Lee Chess right now. There are people who are a lot faster than me at Ultra Bullet. Andrew Tang just destroys me. I'll have to go <laughs> with the seven. I think it's at that point, you're talking about a completely different game. And with regular Bullet one, yeah, I'll probably go with a nine. One minute chess. One minute chess. What about uh, Blitz, Rapid, and Real Chess? Yeah, Blitz is, uh, I mean, it's it's my other true love. So <laughs> let me go with a nine and a half. I mean, in terms of pure addictive potential, Ultra Bullet probably takes the cake just because mm -hmm. like I can play Ultra Bullet for hours and hours and hours. With Blitz, eventually I'll get tired. Yeah. Um, although, you know, I've had nights where I remember one time Grandmaster Alexander Ipatov was uh, GM now lives in the US. He was a family friend and he had a flight out of San Francisco. So he came over to our house um, to, to, to stay with us. And of course, we end up playing Blitz the literally the entire night until his flight. And I had school the next morning. I mean, it, it's just crazy. And it was Blitz. We were playing Blitz. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let me go with a, a, a nine and a half for Blitz. And, uh, you know, it, it's weird for me to say this, but I definitely like Blitz more than I like classical mm -hmm. rapid. I love as well. Let me go with a nine for rapid. I'll probably go with an eight for classical. Interesting. Very interesting. Chess seems to be kind of a night activity for you, the more I'm listening. Yeah. Have you ever broken something out of bullet range? Uh, rage? Oh, I mean, if you, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I actually had to fight a reputation for this. Now, when I first started streaming, um, I was like regularly raging on stream. I was breaking <laughs> M mice are the biggest like <laughs> object that I've broken. I've probably broken 20 of them no over what? the course of my chess career. No way. Yeah, I, um, which is weird. I mean, when some people meet me, you know, I have a pretty placid personality. Yeah. Like I don't, I never rage in real life, but I think anybody who's played a good amount of bullet understands that like, you know, or, or blitz understands the, 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 the fury and the anger that accompanies a frustrating True. game. Now, in the past like year and a half, I have really worked on myself a lot to the point where now I, I never rage on stream anymore. I still get angry, but I, I haven't broken a mouse in like six months, which <laughs> sounds pitifully short, but for me is a world record. Um, so, I, I, you know, I've had the same awesome. mice, mouse for a while. I have shamefully, I've broken a keyboard um, and the most expensive object I've ever broken. This has only happened once. Shamefully, I did break a monitor once. Um, wow. it just pure did, rage overtook me and you a let to be punch. I hit it? it with my fist. Yes. P perfect. That's how you do it. Wow. Because you got to make it count. You know, you can't just <laughs> yeah. like, you can't just shout. You need to actually punish yourself. You need to break something. So yes, I've broken <laughs> a lot of objects, but I guess when you play a lot, as much bullet as I do, and, and you know, every time I play, I'm demanding perfection for myself. Mm -hmm. If I lose a single match against anybody, whether it's Ali Reza or Magnus, it's a disappointment. Uh, so there's a certain amount of competitive. Uh, I mean, some people will call this toxic. I try, I may make a, a golden rule for myself that when I rage and stuff like it's unpleasant to watch, but I try to never do that to other people. Like I'm my own worst critic and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully I've consoled myself, but by telling myself that like when I rage, it's bad. And like I said, I've put a lid on it, but at no point I think did it directly harm anybody else. And so I'm not like necessarily ashamed of it. I just think it's, it's a lifelong fight when you're yeah. as competitive as I am. It's a fundamental urge to get incredibly angry when I lose. I will never like not be able to get angry. That's part of what makes me good, but I'm, I'm proud of the progress that I've made in eliminating the more toxic uh, reactions, I think, to, you know, to, to negative emotions. Gotcha. Interesting. We only have a couple of more minutes left. Let's see how many questions we can get in. Oh, yeah. Sure. So the next question is also, I, I put this on shuffle, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so did you. Oh, wait, that's a stupid question. <laughs> do you agree with this statement first e4 best by test in bullet yes 
Huh. In, in Bullet, I well, in, in Bullet, I think there's basically too many. I think there is objectively better openings to play in Bullet. I think E4 is almost guaranteed to produce tactical struggle, mm -hmm. and I think that the key to playing Bullet, I've never really met. You know, out of the top five or six top bullet players, most people play for Andrew Tang plays one D4 religiously, yeah. um, and he's the exception. So th the caveat to the rule is if you play D4 full time, you can play your actual repertoire in Blitz and Bullet, mm -hmm. and that is one method. But if you are choosing openings specifically for Bullet and you're choosing between E4 and D4, I strongly advocate for E4. In classical chess, disagree very strongly. I think it is... Huh impossible to conclude at the present moment uh, in chess development, whether E4 or D4 is stronger. I think they're actually very, very close to being equivalent in their objective strength. Interesting. So do you have an own repertoire for bullets, like specifically for bullet, which you would never use for classical chess? Uh, to, to a degree. I mean, there's mm -hmm. overlap. You know, some stuff I will play the same in bullet and classical, like Rui Lopez. I'm a Rui Lopez player in classical. Yeah. I'll play it in bullet. Uh, but against the Sicilian, for instance, I'll tend to play uh, like the Grand Prix attack. I'll sometimes play. But again, there's over, like bishop b5 check against the uh, e4, c5, knight f3, d6. I play in both bullet and classical. Um, with black, I I'll do a lot more variety against d4. Like I won't only play the King's Indian. I'll play d4, d5. You know, I'll play Benoni uh, sometimes. So the answer is yes and no. Like I will play my real openings in bullet, mm. but I will be a lot more prone to experimentation and doing stuff that's more dubious, maybe even a little bit later down the line. Like I'll play the King's oh. Indian, but then I'll play a move that's, you know, that, that, that produces tactics, but that in a classical game would be unthinkable. Funny. Okay. How much do you like the Le Fong? <laughs> so... I don't remember like when I was introduced to it. I, I think I've been aware of it forever. You know, like I can answer that in various ways. Have I lefonged people? Yes, I have. Shamefully. <laughs> and I don't do it unless I'm really angry. <laughs> If I'm angry with the way someone has played, sadly, I um, I get a little pissy and I can I can lefong somebody. Um, I don't like it. I think I, I think it goes too far. I think it violates the gentlemanly spirit of the game. I agree oh. with that. But, uh, you know, I'm also the first to admit that in my weaker moments, I'm very much capable of acting in, you know, in, in a non-ideal way. So <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, I think that I would make a, I would draw a, a big distinction between the Lafong and then playing dirty when your opponent is low on time. Oh. Everything is, oh, that's part of the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Time is part of the game. So when your opponent has two seconds and you put your Rook on pre, I don't want to hear it. I'm doing everything I can to win. <laughs> But the Lafong I would put in a different category. Interesting. So this is a very good question because I wanted to ask you anyway, uh, which mouse model, or shall I say mouse models, are you using? <laughs> yeah, so I've I've been through a lot of different models. I've I can probably have a mouse podcast where I just review yeah, mice. Yeah, you should probably have a Nokia mouse or something like that if they would so ever make right a So right now, for the past, and this mouse only came out like, you know, six months ago. So ever since it came out, I've been using the Logitech uh, Pro Superlight. Um, uh, Logitech I've used about 80% of the time. It's my favorite brand by far. Nothing has compared in my experience in terms of the smoothness, in terms of the control that I have and the customizability. So before this, I used the regular uh, G, uh, G Pro, Logitech G Pro. Um, then I switched to the Super Light, which is lighter and mm -hmm. even better. I've also used, um, I've used some Razer. Razer mice are also really good. They're not my favorite, but... I could recommend them as well. Gotcha. I could recommend them as well. Do you uh, have a special mouse pad or do you use the desk or? Do I have a special mouse pad? Yeah, I just have a regular, I have a, a, a Logitech power play. Oh, okay. So I have uh, this this power play, which is an auto charger and it's also functions as a mouse pad. And I have a regular, de regular wooden desk. I could also use the mouse on the wood. It works, but I like the mouse pad gives it a little bit of that extra smoothness. I would love to ask you 100 more questions because <laughs> I think I could never, ever get more insights uh, about Bullet than with you. Well, I'm sorry for every other person I'm going to interview in the future. But two last questions in the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. What is the most important thing in Bullet? Or, yeah, what do you... No, let me ask it differently. Mm -hmm. What is? I can the... answer. I actually have a thought, but go, all right, ahead. All right. go ahead. So, so what is the... 
what is the thing you enjoy the most in Bullet? Hmm. Thing I enjoy the most in Bullet. What I enjoy the most is the process of finding a cool tactic in a Bullet game. It gives me a rush to find it quickly. Mm -hmm. And that feeling when I've tricked someone in Bullet and I've only taken five or 10 seconds or even less to figure out a complicated tactic, that's my favorite feeling. That's fun. And obviously I really enjoy time scrambles as well. Time scrambles give me the ultimate rush. <laughs> Winning a time scramble is just so incredibly satisfying. Okay. And what is the worst thing in Bullet? The worst thing in Bullet. Or what do you hate well, I the most? I could answer that. What do I hate the most? Yeah. Um, hmm. I would say, okay, I struggle against certain people in end games specifically when there's a time scramble in the end game oh. one of the most frustrating experiences i have certain people just seem to be able to pre-move every single move and never blunder <laughs> and this like against andrew tang anytime we have a rook end game i know i'm gonna lose Hits. in a middle game time scramble i'll use tactics i'll figure out ways but like there are certain mechanics of pre-moves mm -hmm. that some people just have over me and it's something i'm working on i've gotten better at it but end game End game scrambles in particular against certain people can be intensely frustrating. Absolutely. Yeah, that requires a lot of bullet expertise because of the anticipation and where to move the rook to and all of that. Yeah, it's it's right. an own dimension. Um, and the very last thing, which advice can you give to our viewers and listeners on how to get better in bullet? Okay, so of course, there's a lot of things I could say, but I'll limit myself uh to just a few things first of all i'd say you know speed is critical and i know mm -hmm. people know that but i think a lot of people still don't understand the extent to which it is critical to monitor your speed to limit the amount of times you spend over 10 seconds a move which should happen at most once in a bullet game mm -hmm. and uh you know you should be obsessed with speed you should be obsessed with optimizing why did i spend five seconds here instead of two seconds can I follow my intuition more? Can I improve my openings? And might that help me acquire that extra little bit of speed? And of course, like tactics are critical. Just under, you know, quickly making tactical observations and using that to guide your play, not being afraid to go for the attack at every turn. So I think a lot of people still don't fully realize that the rules for how you play in bullet are different even than how you play in blitz. You're mm -hmm. able to take a lot more risks and the importance of keeping your king safe and attacking your opponent's king cannot be overstated. It mm -hmm. is almost impossible to defend against an attack in bullet. It is ridiculously difficult. So however you play in classical chess, whatever your style is, you must emphasize to yourself the importance of attacking at every turn. And so working on your attacking chess in general, I think will help you a lot in bullet and you know the last thing i'll say is that it is important to have the proper technology if you invest a little bit more in a good mouse if you make sure you know if you have the capacity to improve your connection that actually really really helps and i think a lot of people exclude themselves from being able to be good by not playing in the right frame of mind mm -hmm. not having the proper equipment and uh you know and all that stuff Everything adds up, you know, I think bullet skill is a combination of a lot of different mini skills rather than one thing that I necessarily like do better than everybody else. Hmm. But those are a couple of things I'd say. There's a lot more I could talk about. I do have a series on, a, you know, a, 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 a bullet series, it. like a cup series of videos. It's amazing. Um, I learned so much for, for my course about this, of course. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And of course, you know, I, I will be watching your course with great um, <laughs> intensity and enjoyment. So it's awesome that you're doing it. So the other thing you can do is watch this course to improve at bullet. We will see about that. The links for Daniel's uh, videos are of course below in the YouTube video. Um, I can't thank you enough for doing this. This was absolutely delightful from the beginning to the end. Um, I hope I really, really, really hope because there's so many more questions, which I want to ask you maybe, at some point in life, we will meet again for a re-interview to tackle a couple of more questions and see where you are in the bullet uh, yeah, expertise and in the bullet world by then. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you, Ernie. This was a pleasure.